Big data. You've heard the term, and you've heard the hype. But we all know hype isn't reality. If you're on the front lines of enterprise digital or analytics, you probably don't need to be told that the hype about big data is mostly hot air. Of course it is. But is there, to paraphrase the famous quote about Oakland, a there, there? In this presentation, I'm going to give an account of what big data is and explain why it's at least somewhat real and interesting. Some of this will be a little bit technical, but I think you'll find it surprisingly accessible, even if you're not an analyst or IT professional. It's also important to realize that this is my account of what big data is. Like any other term hot on the hype cycle, it's used in countless ways, most of which are as empty as the answers in a presidential debate. In fact, not only am I going to explain what big data is, I'm also going to explain why the most common definitions get it wrong. So let's get started. Where I'm going to start is the closest thing there is to a standard definition of big data. It's the three, or depending on what you count, four Vs. This standard definition says that you have big data when you have challenges that can't be handled by traditional database systems. Those challenges are driven by some combination of four factors. The first, and probably the most basic, is volume. When you have a lot of data, you have big data. How much? Well, more than you can handle with your existing system. If this seems a bit circular, hang in there, it gets worse. The second driver of big data problems is variety. Integration of data, joining one data set to another, has always been a big part of traditional IT, and something that database professionals spend a lot of time thinking about how to do well. So it's no surprise that the more sources of data you have, and that's variety, the harder it is to manage. But big data pundits also like to stress that a lot of big data is unstructured, meaning it doesn't exist in nicely defined rows and columns, the way most traditional data does. This is largely nonsense. Many, probably the vast majority of big data sources, are structured. But there are some that aren't. Social media, image processing, voice, these truly add new and different challenges to the mix. Third up is velocity. Most traditional data sources are at rest, meaning we can load them in big batches, once a day, once a week, or once a month. But lots of new data sources, like Twitter or smart meters, generate a constant stream of data. Handling streams of data is certainly a real challenge. Finally, we have veracity, the extra V that not everybody accepts. Well, in this case, not everybody is right, because of all the Vs, it's probably the squishiest. The idea is that we now have to work with less clean data than before, and data cleaning in the analytics world is about as beloved a task as laundry in the world of household chores. Ever since there have been computers, we've been challenged by all of these things. There's always a little more data than our computers can handle. No matter how fast our computers get, we always have more data sources than we know what to do with or how to combine. And data has been at rest and streaming for far longer than big data has been around. I was doing credit card analytics, and before that, stock and commodity analytics, 30 years ago, on data that was most certainly not at rest. Finally, in three decades of analysis, I've never met a clean data set. Rock and roll didn't doom us, civilization isn't coming to an end, and our data isn't getting any dirtier. So the four Vs don't really tell us much. Even where they do present real challenges, it isn't clear that they drive to any single problem, technology, or discipline worth calling out as big data. The technology, techniques, solutions, and challenges of data in a stream are totally different than the challenges of lots of variety or of unstructured data. It all seems like just another bunch of IT hot air. The latest craze vendors dream up to sell you bigger boxes, bigger teams, and bigger contracts. But it isn't. And to see why, we'll have to take a deeper dive into the data. To understand what big data really is and why it's different, let's start with traditional data. Here's an example of a very traditional data table, the sort of thing that exists in every industry. I've chosen a healthcare example, and this table represents patient data. Each patient is represented in a single row, usually with a unique ID. We have the patient's name, their address, their age, their plan number, flags for special conditions, etc., etc. And here's the thing. It doesn't matter how many rows of this data you have. 
It doesn't matter how many different sources contribute columns to this patient record, from billing to pharma to medical to national change of address. And it doesn't matter how fast these variables change. It's just traditional data. And your existing systems, technology, and analysis tools can handle it. That doesn't mean your Oracle database won't be slow. You can underpower or poorly architect traditional data. But this is the kind of data traditional database and statistical analysis tools are designed to handle. Give them the right architecture, and they can do it, and do it well. But knock things down a level, where the data lives at a deeper level of detail, and you introduce some new challenges. My field, digital analytics, is a great example. In digital, our tracking doesn't collect things at a customer level. It tracks events, and each customer can have many events. In and of itself, that may not seem like a huge difference, but it is. Because if we want to analyze those events, we still need to think about them as belonging to a customer. But since they exist in a stream, it turns out that just knowing the events occurred isn't enough. We need to know the sequence of events, how they're ordered. We need to know the time between events. And we need to know the pattern of events. That makes a huge difference. To see why, let's take a closer look. You saw a digital ad, visited the website, and enrolled. Hurrah! But take those same facts and reorder them. You visited the website, enrolled. Then you saw a digital ad for enrollment. That marketing is a waste and probably annoying. And yet the data is identical. Only the order has shifted. But the sequence of events determines the interpretation. Remember that traditional data I showed in the last slide? It's missing a way to capture sequence. When we added columns to the patient record, there's no clue how they are sequenced. Capturing sequence in a traditional database is possible, of course. You can capture almost anything in a traditional database, but handling queries that involve the interpretation of sequence is incredibly challenging and non-performant in those traditional tools. But sequence isn't the only thing that matters in the big data world. Here's an example where we have two streams of digital data that are identical in sequence. Same events in exactly the same order. But in one case, seven days elapsed between the viewing of an ad and the subsequent conversion. In the other, 11 months elapsed. Chances are that initial view had nothing to do with the eventual conversion. In the big data world, the time between events is often very significant. But like sequence, the time between events isn't well captured in traditional data structures. And like sequence, it's very challenging to query and analyze in SQL and relational databases. It's not impossible. Like I said, you can do almost anything in those tools. You just can't do it well, easily, or fast. Introducing time into an analysis greatly complicates traditional database and analytics problems. But it doesn't end there. Sequence and time between are just two particularly common dimensions of big data analysis. When you drop down to a detailed level of data in a stream, the type of analysis that you're doing is almost always concerned with pattern. Here's a really simple example that doesn't involve either sequence or time. When we measure success on a customer support website, we often see visitors query a topic, access some content, and then leave. Were they successful? Well, some were and some weren't. From the website behavior, it's nearly impossible to tell which is which. But if some of those customer support visitors subsequently call an agent, we know that their website visit failed. Here, the pattern of events, the web visit followed by call center is significant. In my field, digital analytics, we're almost always looking at the pattern of page views to understand what a visitor was trying to accomplish and whether or not they were successful. In a way, pattern is just an uber categorization of sequence and time between. Almost any type of pattern can be significant. So it's probably no surprise that everything I've said about traditional database and analytics tools around sequence and time between, applies to generalized pattern recognition. I've used examples for digital analytics. That's my specialty. 
But if you look at every other paradigm case of big data, you'll see that the exact same challenges apply in every case, whether it's digital data, smart meter data, the Internet of Things. Understanding the data requires looking at detailed events in a stream where the keys to interpretation are understanding patterns, including sequence and time. That's why this stuff is hard. That's what makes big data, big data. And it really does matter, because when order, time, and pattern are the keys to analysis, relational data models break down. SQL is far, far worse than traditional coding, algorithmic tools, for analyzing data in this form. What's more, even our stats tools, especially the most common analytic techniques, things like regression and correlation, factor analysis, decision trees, these break down. These are all techniques where the unit of meaning has to live at a higher level than it does in the examples I've shown. It's not that there aren't statistical techniques for analyzing patterns. It's just they aren't the techniques easily supported in most stats tools, and they aren't the techniques most analysts really understand. Oh, and this isn't just an analytics problem either. It's an IT problem too. In traditional IT, if you had two data sources with a common key, you were set. You could use those data sources pretty seamlessly together. But in the big data world of detailed streams, you can have a stream of website data, all with a customer key, and a stream of mobile app data, all with customer keys. But when you join them, you just have two independent streams of data with different fields, different interpretations. The problem is not solved. Joins on stream data don't work the same way they do in the traditional relational database world. Relational databases, traditional stats packages, join strategies, that's the core, the heart of almost everything we do in traditional IT and analytics. And in a big data world, it's all broken. That's why this stuff really matters. And it isn't just semantics. It's important to understand whether you have big data problems or not. It's important if you want to understand what the right technology is, what the right tool set is, what skills you need, what business benefit you expect. There's an endless line of hardware and consulting vendors waiting to tell you how valuable big data is. Well, sometimes they're right. There is information and value in these detailed streams that can tackle new problems and provide significant competitive advantages. But it isn't always that way. When you collect smart meter data every 15 minutes, you can do some kinds of analysis that were never possible before. You can figure out which households use power during the day and which use it at night. If you're trying to help people shift consumption, it's key. But it may not matter. When you send out a bill, having a 15-minute increment and adding them all up to a month doesn't make it any more accurate than if that meter just sent the monthly total. So if you try to use big data to tackle the wrong kind of problem, you're just making life harder on everyone. So my final message, big data is real. It is meaningful, but it's not what you probably thought it was. And you know something funny? It's not what your big data vendor thinks it is either. I hope this big data primer has been helpful. Cutting through the hype around big data is important. If you have to make decisions about technology, consulting, or maybe even career, to learn more about big data, big data technologies, or, and this is what's really important, how and whether you can actually use big data to drive competitive advantage, don't hesitate to drop me a line.